This is Tom Blackie, and today I'm talking about bottom of the heel spurs and back of the heel spurs. So these are a very common problem. It's popular in the media, you know, people got out of military service for heel spurs. They get a horrible rap, you know. I have patients come into clinic and they're about to have a heart attack because they think they might have a heel spur. Well, newsflash. 15% of people in society right now, on average in America, that's the statistic, have a heel spur that they're suffering with. And it's said that 40 to 45% of people in their life will have some type of chronic bottom of the heel or back of the heel pain. So this video is very important. I've got a few up on this. This is gonna be a bigger guide with more in-depth treatment to make sure you get your heel spur taken care of because we're gonna go over all the things you can do at home. We're gonna make sure you don't have to go get surgery. We're gonna make sure you're not on disability. And if you're an athlete, we're gonna make sure you have less pain, you can keep running, you can keep jumping, you can keep playing sports because heel spurs can impact all of these people, young or old, you know, the things that lead to a heel spur. And we're starting right now. So I know that sounds a little bit dramatic, but heel spurs are one of the most common and debilitating things we see. I see a lot of people in pain suffering. So, so heel spur is defined as two millimeters or more growing on the bottom of your heel or the back of your heel. When we take an x-ray, this looks like a spike coming out of the bottom of your heel, which is associated with your plantar fascia, or a big spike on the back associated with your Achilles tendon. So the heel spur without x-ray is not really visible. So you can take your hand through your skin and you can try and push up on it. The area will feel bruised, but you won't really feel the spike. And same thing on the back of your heel. It'll feel bruised, it'll feel sore in most cases, but you shouldn't really feel the spike unless you're like 70, 80 and it's a horrendous spur. So here's the risk factors for heel spur. If you're elderly, if you're stiff, if you have a tight back, tight glutes, tight hamstrings, tight knees, if you have knee pain, hip pain. If you're an athlete and you get up in the morning and the bottom of your foot is sore, the back of your heel is sore. If you feel like you're getting slower and achier and you can't jump as high and you can't run as high, these are things that might signify a heel spur. What a heel spur is, you can think of a rope. When you pull on the rope, that rope gets damaged. Well, the body tries to fix these things. So the ligaments that pull out of your heel, rip out of the heel on the bottom, that's called your plantar fascia. So when your plantar fascia rips out of the bottom of the heel, your body tries to create new bone to strengthen that. That's what the heel spur is. Or in the back of your heel, when your Achilles tendon is vertically pulled, that rips out of the back of your heel with microscopic little tears and damages the area. And what happens is your body day after day, year after year grows a spur to strengthen that insertion. So your Achilles tendon coming in the back and your plantar fascia coming in the bottom. That's what leads to the heel spurs. So there's different illnesses associated with the heel spur. Loss of fat pad. If you're missing fat pad, if you can feel your bones on the bottom of your heel, click on this video. We go over or click down in the show notes. I don't know if I have enough room to link all these videos. And we talk about fat pad loss. But if you lose fat, you're gonna get more pressure on your heel. There's also nerve pain. If you have radiating, numbness, burning, and tingling, we link a video below as well that talks about nerve impingement that can feel like a heel spur. If you have plantar fasciitis, so if the whole bottom of your foot is achy, that could be plantar fasciitis pain. And down below, we click on, or sorry, we provide some links on how to take care of your plantar fascia. And it's possible to have a heel stress fracture. So if you take your heel and you actually squeeze it with your fingers and it aches, not just from the bottom, but from side to side, that could be a heel stress fracture. So again, we have a great video on heel stress fractures, but let's get to the heel spur. The thing is, you have to get an x-ray if you think you might have one. So podiatrists generally specialize in doing this. So in clinic, I would do a physical exam, and a lot of times you could tell ahead of time who's gonna have a heel spur based on the treatments that I'm gonna tell you ahead of time that can help you without having to see a podiatrist, but I do recommend it. And what, when we get the x-ray, you can see the spur at the bottom of the heel or at the back of the heel. So two millimeters or more is the official definition of a heel spur. And what happens is 
If it's at the back of the heel, it's usually a tight Achilles tendon, tight hamstring, tight knee, tight hip, some type of previous injury. Or if it's at the bottom, it's usually associated with plantar fasciitis and the spur forming from tension there associated with being flat footed or even high arched. So again, if you're flat footed or you have a high arched, separate topics in themselves down below, I link the videos to all that kind of stuff. But you're here for the treatments. So here's what you wanna do is, number one, I'm gonna talk about surgeries. Who needs surgeries? I'll tell you, I used to do some of these surgeries at the beginning and they worked okay, but everybody hates surgery. Why would you get surgery done when there's easier things to do? You know, I know there's some people out there that think like that and so be it. You know, if you want your spur removed, we can help with that. Here's how the surgery works. Studies show that basically removing the spur is not what's recommended anymore. There's a procedure called an endoscopic gastrocnemius recession. So lengthening the calf muscle will take pressure off the back of the Achilles tendon and it will take pressure off the bottom of the foot. That's probably the way to go now with what science says. I kind of did it all. I used to use an endoscopic scope to lengthen the plantar fascia. It worked okay, but it kind of flattened out the people's feet even more. And that's what the studies show. And studies now show removing the actual spur can destabilize the foot because you're removing where the bone attaches to the ligaments. So you want to lengthen the ligaments and you want to lengthen the muscles and the tendons. So why not just lengthen them in the first place? This is the crazy thing about heel spur surgery, plantar fascia surgery, Achilles tendon surgery. Studies say removing the spur is not needed, but lengthening the muscles and the tendons are needed. Everybody should be, 99% of people, you know, granted if you're in a car accident, you probably can't stretch and you probably can't do physical therapy, but 99% of the people with what I show you will be able to fix these things. But number one, let's talk about pain relief. So I'm a big fan of using topical creams. I hate pills. There's too many pills in America, pain medication. Everybody's familiar with all the problems of taking pain medications and pills. Creams can be good because they don't go into the body, thus you don't get as addicted. But if you do take a pill and you're forced to, stick to ibuprofen, Aleve, you know, the anti-inflammatory pills never go more than two weeks in my opinion. I'd probably go a lot less than that, you know. But the creams are, there's anti-inflammatory creams. There's things like Voltaren that are available. And I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, but strike that out. I didn't say a specific name, but anti-inflammatory creams. And what I like over the counter, Biofreeze. I link that down below, but Biofreeze is great. It's cheap, you can roll it on, it's a cream. In like 15, 20 minutes, it's like icy hot. It gets your pain level down pretty quickly. So that's how you take care of the pain. Icing's great too. So freezing a water bottle is great. Freezing, you know, just taking a nice pack on the bottom of your foot, massaging back and forth can work really good and doing massages. Massages on your plantar fascia on the back of the heel, especially with frozen devices, that's the best way to get pain relief. But it's not a permanent solution. For that morning pain or that walking pain, freeze a nice bottle. You know, I show a can here, but realistically do a plastic one so it doesn't blow up in your freezer and kill someone. But a couple minutes rolling back and forth while you're watching TV, there's ice balls for sale. These are like 20, 30 bucks now. Not great for the bottom of the foot, but for the calf muscle behind the knee, the hamstring, they can be great. These rubber spiked balls can be really good. They're soft. They break up that stiff tissue standing on it with all your body weight. Start soft, then go harder. Don't bruise up your skin. Massage sticks are amazing. Using this 10, you know, 30 seconds per muscle. That's all you need. 10, 20, 30 seconds. I do this on my calf muscles, my hamstrings, the bottom of the foot. Don't do it while you're standing and flexing your muscle, but get the bottom of your foot, your calf, the front of your leg, your hamstrings, your butt muscles. This makes a huge, huge difference. And then you can stretch. The more sore you are, the more you should focus on icing and massaging and then stretching. And I'm talking gentle stretching. You don't need to do a one hour yoga session. We're talking like a five minute routine total in the morning. So stretching your calf muscles, your hamstrings, and this should be gentle stretching to relieve pain, not to force your muscles to tear. Creams can be really good too. So in this uh, stock footage here, this is supposed to show biofreeze, you know, there's anti-inflammatory 
creams like Voltaren available. Use it on your calf muscle and skip the pills. I'm not a huge fan of the pills, especially some of my patients here that have 20 medications or so. This is going to cause liver issues, kidney issues, especially kidneys with anti-inflammatories. Liver is more like the acetaminophen abuse. And these things can lead to problems rather than solutions. This is a massage gun right here. Great YouTubers, Bob and Brad, they're physical therapists. They came up with this one and sent it to me. They are solid guys, but there are cheaper guns out there. What these massage guns do is number one, stick with that rubber ball that's on there in the image, but this has great reviews. They used to be expensive, like 200 plus bucks. There's ones as cheap as 30, 40 bucks all the time on Amazon. If uh, it's not cost uh, prohibitive now, get the one with the rubber ball, plug it in, use it for a few minutes in the morning. Use it on your butt, your thighs, your hamstrings, your calf muscles. I'm telling you, you will find sore muscles that loosen up over a week or two with very light use and you will see huge benefits. This works really well. So this is the biomechanics behind this happening. It's always the tighter foot that's getting the problem. This is the big secret right here. This is what's gonna fix your heel spur. Take a look at my right foot. It's more flexible than my left foot. So that's called dorsiflexion. So see the difference there? It's about 10 degrees of my ankle. So my left foot turns out. That outward turn twists the Achilles tendon in the back and twists the plantar fascia tighter. That makes you get back of the heel and bottom of the heel spurs. That's the secret right there. That difference, because you're not flexible enough in your calf and your hamstring, that's going to cause the whole problem for you. It's that simple. Take a look at this gentleman. He's flexible. He's running straight. His feet are landing straight. There's not much pressure on the plantar fascia and the Achilles tendon. Thus, they're not ripping out of the bone. But take a look at this person. The foot's flattening out. The heel is collapsing in on the inside. That stretches the Achilles tendon. That's stretching the plantar fascia. Over the years, that will develop potential spurring in the bottom of the heel and the back of the heel. Take a look at this older gentleman. He, he's not flexible through his calf and his foot. His feet are just kind of thumping and landing. That puts tremendous pressure on the back of the heel and the bottom of the heel, potentially creating a spur. That's the trick. So those massages work really well, but what you want to do is this is the single biggest thing for pain relief. Great shoes, great supportive sandals. So what you want to do is shoes with orthotics. Those two things are amazing. And then a home slipper. What you want to do is think about support, not as immediate pain relief. The immediate pain relief is from the ice, from the massage, from the biofreeze, from the pills. What shoes and orthotics do is they hold your feet straight. So check out your plantar fascia down here. Inserts from your heel to your foot and check out your Achilles tendon. It inserts from the heel up to your calf muscle. So pretend on this foot model, you know, this is an expensive foot model. Watch the bottom of your foot when I push down with gravity. See how the bottom stretches and see how the Achilles tendon stretches. So what happens is the foot's fairly straight, but now it buckles out to the side. So that rotation movement stretches the Achilles tendon and that, you know, front to back motion stretches the plantar fascia. So the more weight you push down on your foot, the more the Achilles tendon and the plantar fascia stretch. For my purposes, I can kind of consider them the same unit, you know? More downward pressure collapses that arch and that Achilles tendon. Year after year, that's gonna give you plantar fasciitis, Achilles tendonitis, and as a result, spurs on the bottom or the back. It's kind of random which one comes first. Most people get plantar fasciitis. There's a lot of factors, but we have to do everything we can to prevent this foot from flattening out. Now, there's the barefoot running theory. I'll just leave it at this. It works great for young people, not the greatest for older people suffering from this illness. It's barefoot running basically makes you take shorter, choppier steps. And yes, it does use muscles a little bit, but realistically go to the gym for five minutes or do some Pilates and you'll more than make up for it. Our goal here is to get you great pain relief and fix your biomechanics. So what's the best way to prevent your foot from flattening out? Great support and great posture. So check this out. Look at how much that flattens. Check this out on an orthotic. Oh, look, it's not flattening at all. Check the back right here. 
look at how much it flattens out to the side. That's Achilles tendonitis. Check this out right here. It's not really flattening. So what happens is orthotics work phenomenal. They prevent that stretch and twist on the Achilles tendon and they prevent that stretch on the plantar fascia. This alone right here will prevent new damage from happening. Now I'm gonna warn you, it can take one month to get roughly 40 to 50% better, two months to get you know 60 to 75% better, and three months to get like 75 plus percent better. So wearing an orthotic for one day is not going to fix it. It doesn't work like that. That's where the ice massage, staying off of it can help. You know, so same kind of thing. If you're working 16 hours on a factory floor and you're 400 pounds, an orthotic will make it better, but it's not guaranteed to fix it. And this is where people go wrong. They wear an orthotic for a day or two. They don't get used to it. They hate it. They complain to their podiatrist. So I have to hear that. That's why I warn people ahead of time. And the reality is I'm not trying to sell you a $500 custom orthotic or $800 in some countries. This is dirt cheap. Down in the show notes, I link maybe $20 orthotics. And with inflation, you know, that's dirt cheap. That's nothing. That's almost free for most people. You know, I apologize to people in other countries. I, I don't know how hard it is to get an orthotic like on the other side of the world. But here in North America, realistically, it's not a lot of money. Everybody should get one. So a good orthotic in a good shoe is amazing. Now, do these heel spur pads work right here? They do provide a little vertical relief, but that's not what's going to stop the plantar fasciitis from stretching. These work for most people because they lift the heel. They will give you some immediate relief, but they won't work long term. That's why I kind of stay away from these. Go with an orthotic, get a little bit more lift on your orthotic, and you can stick a metatarsal pad under the heel to get a little bit more lift. And we showed that in other videos and we link some of the metatarsal pads, but you can lift that heel. You can stick stuff underneath it, but don't go with just these in place of orthotics. These are not as good in my opinion. If you really need to see these types of gel heel cups, there's a lot of different varieties. You could get glued ones on the bottom of your orthotic, or you could put these on top of your orthotics. These can work really well. You know, if you feel like you need a little bit of extra gel plus the orthotic, feel free to get these at the beginning. But realistically, see these types of shoes right here. If you're wearing these types of shoes with just that gel pad, I want you to know that you're probably not helping yourself at all long term. There's 0% chance like a, a shoe like this and an insole will fix it for you. I would say 0% chance. If you're trying to minimize you know, the damage during a meeting or something, that's one thing. But 0% chance of fixing your plantar fasciitis and Achilles tendonitis long term using these. And when I say zero, I mean there's a ton of variables. And I'm sure there's going to be one person saying, hey, it worked for me, but it's probably because you were doing the other stuff. So same kind of thing. What about barefoot walking at home? You're not going to wear an orthotic. Watch this. Flattening. Oh, look at this. A generic supportive insole. And I like my favorites below. Look, it's not collapsing. And look, same thing, slippers with orthotics in there. So I'm in Michigan. I lived in Canada and Poland. So look at sandals and slippers with orthotics built into them. Come on, at home, everybody's got support. The second you get out of bed, it doesn't have to hurt. You have to get into your slippers. And I'm gonna tell you, the second you get up out of bed, those first 10 steps you take that are aching and throbbing, that's doing so much damage already that it could everything you do the rest of the day is basically worthless. So get good slippers, get good sandals. Down in the show notes are my favorites. They're really cost effective, they're really beneficial. And what you wanna do as well is get a good shoe. So look at how cushioned and supportive these shoes are. The orthotic, you get an orthotic, you put it in the shoe, perfect fit. This is easy, come on. So these should be very easy solutions, but think about your shoe and your orthotic kind of like braces for a crooked tooth. It's not meant to get pain relief like a cream or a pill is. It's meant to hold you straight to prevent that new damage from coming. So that could take one month, two months, three months. And in the meantime, you're gonna massage and you're gonna ice. Weight loss. So this is the most overrated thing, but still very important. People always focus on weight loss, but if you're tight and stiff in all your joints, then it doesn't really make a big difference, you know, whether you lose weight or not. What you really need to do is do the shoes, the orthotics and the home slippers first, massage and ice to get that initial pain out of the way. And also I should mention for pain, 
the podiatrist, such as myself, can perform a heel injection. That is not as dangerous as people think it is. I do that quite a bit. It works really well. It's relatively safe. It can make your pain go away fairly easily. But those are things you want to try. That's a very, very beneficial thing. Now massaging. There's a lot of great devices. I went over this massage tool, but listen, the massage gun works. This will not melt away your spur. The idea is you want to get rid of the inflammation, soreness, and stiffness of your plantar fascia and your Achilles tendon and use it on your hamstring, your glute, and your butt muscles to get pressure off these ligaments. And that's the whole point. It's not to melt the spur away. So don't just focus on the spur. The spur gradually, you forget about it. And over time, it can get resorbed. I'm talking like years, but the reality is the spur will stop hurting if your plantar fascia, your calf, your hamstring, your glute muscles, your back, in the vast majority of cases I see, will stop hurting completely if you're flexible in your other muscles and you don't have to worry about it. The orthotic, the good shoes combined with the massage will more than solve this problem for you without needing surgery to remove the spur because, hey, the surgery doesn't remove it anyway. So there's a lot of specific foot massage devices like that out there. Again, these guys sent me one. I'm not advocating that this is the only one to get, but these can work really well. It fits up to a size men's 12. If you're over 12, don't go for it. But look at basically you stick your feet into it. And what it does do is there's a few different things. It puts pressure from the bottom. It rolls. It presses into your arch while you're watching TV. It compresses in the back. So see those are little air bladders in the back and on the top. And there's rollers and, you know, soft pressurized lumps in there. And what happens is you kind of go into a foot sleeve that you can take out and wash. So realistically, it is what it is. It does a great job. You know, is it expensive? It's a little bit more expensive than like having your spouse do it. Uh, you can kind of see right here, there's $140 with a coupon right here. I think I have some discount codes, you know, who knows if they're still valid at the time of their watching, but it's got great reviews, you know, 4.5 out of five. And you can kind of see as I come down here on this thing, uh, people are kind of raving about it. You know, the people who use it like it. Most of the bad reviews are it's broken, but you can send it back. So if you don't have a spouse to massage you, then get one of these. But again, there are cheaper devices. Compression socks. Compression socks and ankle braces can make a big difference too. So I'm a huge fan of compression socks. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about them because keeping that swelling down can prevent your nerves from stretching out and creating damage as well. So take a look at something like this. These are plantar fasciitis or heel spur socks. What they really do is they provide compression. So you could see there's a couple different uh, colors that actually look pretty cool how they do that. But they're sizing guides. You can fit them right there. Let's see, they look pretty nice. You, know, you can put them on underneath your socks or over your socks. So I have a lot of patients wear these. They're very happy. Is the price huge? The price isn't huge. Will they solve your problem? They won't completely solve your problem, but they will make you feel better. They'll keep the swelling down. Every little bit helps during the day. So if you want some more pain relief, these can work. There's also the more full-sized ones like these. I actually like these. I've used these in the past for ankle problems, for foot problems. Again, they provide some compression, a little bit of stability. They'll fit in your shoes pretty easily. They won't make your heel spur melt away, but they will help with the pain and swelling and allow you to massage a little bit more and stretch a little bit more over time. Ankle braces, I love ankle braces. So if your ankle's flattening out and you already did the orthotics and the shoes and still not getting better, because hey, if you're a big guy, if you're a tight guy or you're a tight gal or, or you know whatever uh, you wanna classify as, you might need even more support than shoes and orthotics. So a brace might help even more. And that stops you from flattening out as well. And I like my favorites down below. These ankle braces are amazing for heavy duty. If you're really heavy and nothing's helping on the inside of your ankle, something like this could help quite a bit. And these are a little bit more complicated. You can kind of see right here that you have to lace them. There's two straps that you have to wrap around and then you Velcro the straps to the inside and outside and you can lock your foot into the position. So if your ankle's sagging and collapsing, as I showed in the earlier examples, this long term is one of the most successful things that you can do. I love these braces. I use them a lot for my patients for the resistant cases. This combined with a good shoe and an orthotic can work 
amazing results, but it's not immediate. This is not a pain relief uh, system. This is really a system so you can kind of see all those straps on the inside. This is a heavy duty solution to make you walk straight. Now be aware, your hamstring, your calf, and your knee will absorb this. So you have to get those flexible. That's why people don't like these at the beginning. So something like this, there's some other brands too. It's not just this brand, they can work really well. And you can see here, I actually purchased this one a while back. I love braces overall. I test everything out. These, are they as strong? So you can check out the different colors. They're not as strong as the one uh, with the lace up, but it's kind of in the middle. If you have a hard time putting the other ones on, this could be a good one. But if you need heavy duty support, get the other stronger one with the laces that I showed you. So you can kind of see right here, these straps just kind of do up. Uh, this one's a little bit lighter, a little bit more breathable. But nonetheless, if you have the money, check them both out. Massaging is phenomenal too. So massage sticks, massage guns, balls to roll on your feet, frozen ice bottles, these things all work. The more painful you are, focus more on icing and massaging rather than stretching and exercising. Stretching is very important too. So if I haven't hammered it in already, massage and warm up first. So that will help get rid of the pain. So just a couple ankle rolls in the morning, you know, massage, get those muscles loose. I love the massage sticks, the icing ahead of time, but then stretching. So before I massaged, I can't touch my toes, but after I do, I can easily do it. And then I stretch and I'm talking like 30 seconds per muscle for your hamstring, for your calf muscle, but make it a routine. The trick has to be a routine. There's a ton of stretching videos out there. Just do it every single day. Is something like this pretty good? Yeah, absolutely. You know, but in the videos, I kind of use a towel to do the same thing. You can do a lot of different stretches. You can sit in a chair. If you're really having a hard time getting down to your feet, you know, this is not bad. It holds your foot. It helps you get a nice calf stretch and a nice, I'd use it specifically for these, although the thigh is good too, but use a towel to do the same thing. That's kind of my thoughts there, but this is a great device. These stretch splints are pretty popular. And the idea is you put your foot into it overnight. So see, and you can adjust these straps, see these angled straps and tighten them. And that hinge along the heel tightens. This can hold you in a stretched position for a long time. These are called night splints because people wear them at night. But look at 90% of patients I know it's very uncomfortable to wear while sleeping. I would put this on while you're watching TV if you do use this to do some stretching and it does work good. Number one, you could stretch yourself, but if you want the more automated route, put your foot in this, tighten it and do it for like 10, 15 minutes while you're watching TV. If it's more than like 15 minutes, your ankle and your Achilles tendon probably goes numb. Don't overstretch because you're going to cause pain. I have a lot of people complain about pain and cause more damage, especially making the front of their foot numb. So just be aware these can work really well they can be really effective but don't use them more than 15 to 30 minutes and don't use them while you're sleeping because the reality is you're not going to be able to fall asleep properly it's going to hurt and you're going to be overstretched and sore and probably damage the next day in your calf muscle so check it out but it's not perfect and what I like to do is use gravity. So right here, you know, don't throw out your back if you have a back problem or a fusion, but I press into my thighs, not painfully. I'm just kind of resting here to stretch my hamstrings, my calf muscles. But if you do this every day, you can track it. And I love to use a towel the inside of my thighs as well. I'm stretching right there. But if you're having a hard time, a device like this, an ankle slant board, can help you keep track of it. So it starts at 15 degrees and see, can you touch the floor there? I can right there. But now I move up to say 20 degrees. And what happens is for a week or two, I'll do that. And if I feel pretty good, I'll move up to now 30 degrees as an example. I think this goes up to like 45, 50 degrees. But over time, you can keep track of your flexibility, get your calf muscles, your hamstrings flexible. And that's the trick. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. We appreciate your likes, your subscribes, your comment. We really love hearing if this stuff helps. It really makes a big difference for us. So thank you. Difference for us. So if this video helped you at all, contribute down, down below. It really helps us out. Thanks and we appreciate you.